Hey there internet friends, continuing on with our series on colour calibration for CRTs, focusing on our, uh, our retro gaming favourite displays. I've got my Sony PVM D20L5A monitor here and previously uh, we did a number of calibrations on it for grayscale um, and I've got those, I've just re-run my grayscale test across here, so see the previous video on how we got to this point. Also, uh, if you haven't caught up this far, see the previous videos on colour theory, um, talking about um, what we're doing and why we're doing it, uh, why we're worrying about trying to get this centre point nice and accurate, um, which we've done here. We've got a nice low delta E across our entire gamma band, remembering that our delta E is our, our error, uh, how far off a particular spec we are, and we're looking for a, a delta E across the board of 2.0 or less, uh, so we're right on the, the money for this one, uh, but we've got some nice low values here, which is pretty good. Uh, 2.0 being uh, what's considered uh, human visible, uh, where humans can see the difference between the different colours. So uh, we've done that for our grey scale, um, and now we're going to have a look at our colours to see how our colours look. Um, and we're going to Today we're going to care about our primary and secondary colours mostly, uh, which if we look on our little tr colour triangle here, uh, our white point smack bang in the centre here, um, and again remember that this is a, what we're looking at here in this horseshoe shape is actually a three-dimensional shape uh, with uh, white being uh, coming out of the screen uh, in the z-axis and black going into the screen in the z-axis, um, and then these axes representing our, our, our primaries. And of course, in between our primaries are our secondaries in our additive uh, colour space. So if we add uh, green and red together, we get yellow. Uh, if we add uh, blue and red together, we get magenta. And blue and green gives a sign, of course. So we're going to look at these six points, the three primaries and the three secondaries. And we're going to try and get those nice and accurate. We've got our grayscale in the middle accurate, um, but we're going to try and look at those different primaries and secondaries. So we hit the button. Uh, we do the sweep, and off we go. Now you might see uh, different delays in how the probe picks up the different colours. Uh, red particularly, the uh, lower wavelength light, it's pretty difficult for the probe to pick up. Um, so it does take a little while compared to some other colours, and obviously when we uh, when we're doing black or near black, there's very few photons going into the probe, so it does take a little while for it to pick up the amount of information it needs to, to judge that. Alright, so we've done a sweep, um, and we notice a few things straight off the bat. Uh, we notice that our couple of our primaries are out. Uh, blue's good, blue's great, uh, but red and green uh, are out a fair bit. Uh, although still low, right? Like. Two is, is human noticeable, so a delta E of, of uh, three or four is okay. Uh, again, like I said in previous videos, it, you can get a little obsessive over these sorts of things. I know I do sometimes. Um, but uh, that's still pretty good ballpark. Uh, blue and yellow, obviously great. Yellow is an important color. Um, this whole yellow spectrum here, sort of from from yellow to red in that kind of area there, that's your, uh, where a lot of skin tones sit. Again, remembering that this is a three-dimensional graph, so we see yellows and oranges, but a, a dark orange in terms of colour on a CRT is where all the skin tones fall. Um, and if you simply adjust the, um, the sort of the, the brightness or the darkness of those uh, yellow-orange sort of tones, that's where you go through the sort of the whole gamut of human skin tone, which is very, very difficult, ironically, to get accurate on TVs. Um, which is kind of the thing we care about the most when we're watching film, at least. Um, skin tone of humans, if that's not uh, accurate, then we start to get into that uh, waxy skin, uncanny valley kind of uh, territory. So getting that right is pretty important. So having my uh, yellows good is, is great. My red's not so good. Mm, it's kind of a bit of an issue. Uh, my cyan, though, that, that's what worries me the most here. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that, that's way out. So I think I'm going to try and concentrate on that value. Um, and you can see here in my graph, this is where I want cyan to be, in this sort of range here, across these squares. Um, and then I think this is my uh, my measured, or is this my measured? 
the circle. The circle should be my measured. Um, so again, you can see my, my green square versus green dot are sort of bang on top of each other. Same with uh, red, red, blue, blue, even though they're, I mean, they're not great, but they're not terribly far off. But you see my cyan's got quite a bit of drift on it, uh, which isn't so good. Um, yeah, that's my, my measured. Um, so I'm going to try and get that sign to drift over here. Now, there's some challenges when we try and do that, obviously. Um, if we're going to start stuffing around with these colours, we're going to affect all colours. We're going to affect all shades. Uh, we might even, depending on how the CRT um, actually deals with, uh, with colour uh, calculations internally, we might even change our white points. So we've just got to be super careful um, and we'll keep doing all our colour sweeps over and over to make sure we're not stuffing around too much with things. Um, but yeah, so on my PVM, this is different for every display, obviously, um, depending on the manufacturer and the controls that they offer. Um, PVMs are good because they've got a fairly wide range of uh, calibrations. Later on when we do um, like consumer CRTs and maybe some arcade machines, you'll see that we really just don't have a whole bunch of options. It's kind of a bit... Um, a bit limiting and you kind of got to do what you can with what you've got but this one's kind of cool if I hit the menu button I bring up the usual menu uh, now I'm uh, outputting via HDMI off my laptop through a HDMI converter that spits out component video into my PVM you know heaps of different ways to get a signal to the PVM um, depending on how you get a signal to your PVM it might change some of the options that are available to you um, but yeah, I'm, I'm sitting here on my PVM and um, as always, I am, uh, it should tell me somewhere around here, here it is, um, I'm calibrating to uh, Rec 709 rather than uh, 601. Now I can put this monitor in 601 mode, I leave it in 709 mode, I explain that in a couple of the previous videos. Technically, Rec 601 is our uh, SD, standard definition color format, probably a bit more accurate for your old gaming consoles. I'm doing 709 uh, just because it's easier to get 709 calibration material. Um, and we'll see some of that later on when we look at the DVD methods of calibrating rather than the laptop methods. But anyway, um, so this is my menu. Uh, if I hold the, the Gauss button and press enter, I actually get into a second menu. Uh, which is kind of cool. And again, it's, this is different for different models. TVs have all sorts of like magic uh, remote control options that you've got to press to get into calibration menus and things, which is kind of frustrating. I wish they'd just make that a bit more obvious. Uh, but this is the one that I'm looking at here. And some of these double up, like if I go into the, uh, the white balance menu, I've got my, um, my gain and bias options there um, that I had when I was doing my uh, grayscale, my gamma. So they're doubled up there. But some of these extra ones, like I've got um, sub brightness, some contrast, they're really good for like, if I'm trying to push the brightness or contrast up or, or down, uh, if I wanna get my black levels right or I wanna get my uh, maximum brightness right, and I, there's, I'm sort of capping out on what's available through the, through the basic options on the right, um, I can use these to tweak those a bit further. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna ignore that. I'm gonna look at, what I'm gonna look at here, uh, in particular, um, I, sh I should mention before I go any further, if you look at, sometimes you see these options like uh, this one, these level options. Um, so they don't quite do what we think they do. Um, from what I can tell, they're like a uh, more internal voltage level. Um, so they're like a cap. Um, so if you fiddle with those, you'll find that nothing really changes uh, in your color and then suddenly you'll get a rapid change. So it's like a, a maximum input output level of, of the signal type that's coming into the monitor um, as an upper or lower bounds. So we don't mess with those too much. We like to leave those alone. Uh, but what we will mess with is uh, the Chroma PB and Chroma PR, which is uh, these two options here. Um, and they're going to change out. Now, uh, I should at some point do a video on different color spaces. Um, Displaced Gamers have an excellent, excellent video on uh, why Prime PBPR the, the, and, and their, in their Chroma Luma series, and they explain it excellently. So I think um, if you're interested in that side of things, you should really, really watch their video on both of those. It explains all of this, um, why that's different to things like uh, RGB, uh, how it's similar but different to concepts like YUV and YIQ that we used in NTSC broadcast and PAL broadcast and CCAM broadcast 
um, and the differences therein. However, uh, for now, just take my word for it, um, I'm going to mess with these guys. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look at my uh, Chroma PB value uh, and then I'm going to take a constant reading. So I'm going to hit my cyan color and I'm going to hit the old uh, constant reading and up that comes. So that's going to take uh, a sample every second or so and you'll see that flashing on screen there um, which uh, indicates it taking a sample. Um, and you'll, again, because we're dealing with analog electronics, because we're dealing with uh, electronics that refresh, uh, and just because we're dealing with you know physics and the real world, uh, these values will change on every refresh ever so slightly. So you see these values, even though I'm not touching anything on the monitor, these will jump around. Totally, totally normal. Um, so pretty instantly what I see in my cyan here is that my green is way down, which is, uh, that's a bit tricky, um, because the, the PBPR... Um, changes the, the the red drift and blue drift uh, away from green, that sort of measurement. Uh, and again, uh, if you understand that color space, you'll understand what they mean. Um, so it, it's, uh, you know, we have to sort of change the, the blue and red to change the perception of green. And that's what we're going to try and do here. Um, so we kind of want to get this uh, blue down. We've got way too much blue in this picture. Now these are, this is at full saturation, obviously. So if you look at your little uh, color, uh, uh, triangle little gamut horseshoe wheel thingy here. Uh, when we talk about um, the the grayscale gamma, that sort of thing, we're sort of always talking about this middle range here where we're at our white point, where we choose our white point. So for us that's at um, 6500 Kelvin or 6504 more accurately white point. When we talk about saturation, um, we talk about, so uh, in, in another color model you talk about hue, value and saturation. So your, your hue is how far around, imagine this was a circle of color, how far around that circle of color you go. Um, the, the value, I believe, is the uh, blackness or whiteness of that, so in the screen, out of the screen. And then the saturation is how far out. So a, a very unsaturated red, for instance, puts you in this pink zone. Um, a very, very saturated red puts you out here. Now you can fall outside the zone. You can, you can be oversaturated and have your colors fall too far out. So for us here, um, our blue saturation in our cyan, in our cyan secondary, is far too high, uh, and our green is far too low. So uh, if you look at it, there's our green and there's our blue. What that's doing is the blue's too high, which is dragging it this way, and the green's too low, which is dragging it uh, away from the green. So we want to shift it this way uh, by trying and getting our blues and, and greens sort of sorted. Our red's pretty good. Um, and we don't want to muck with that too much. If we muck with red, we start affecting yellow because that's the, the red-green secondary. Um, but we're going to try, and also, you know, a blue spot on. So we've got to be careful too. If we, if we muck around too much with our cyan, we could affect our blue. Uh, so let's try that. Let's, uh, let's fiddle with our PB. Hopefully that's the one that we want. Um, so if I send this uh, maybe down a little bit. My delta, my delta E does change a bit there. It's dropping, so I'm just going to do this real slowly, right? So if I if I hit the down button here, it's going to take a few samples for my delta E to drop. So it looks like I've got to drop it quite a bit. So I'm going to going to go a bit crazy here and let it sample. So we're dropping. We're definitely dropping our cyan delta E down, which is good. Uh, I sort of loathe to push it too far down, but this value just keeps going down. So let's uh, let's just drop it all the way, see what happens there. All right, so we got that pretty low. Uh, but as always, and I'm just going to push uh, Enter to save that. As always, we should always uh, recheck everything else. So uh, red and green, not so good. A cyan, not so good. Let's recheck, see where we land. My laptop fan's going off here, so hopefully uh, that doesn't irritate everybody with the high pitch squeal in this video. I'm using a laptop that was made uh, a very long time ago because I'm cheap. All right. So last value to read always wants to read black and white as well when it does the color sweep i guess to get a reference point 
Um, all right, so you know, instantly we see what's happened. Um, we have our cyan is much better, obviously. Uh, we sort of drag that value uh, towards uh, the green, which is what we wanted. Um, oops, click cyan, there we go. So better, right? So our blue was really high, uh, our red was uh, pretty much bang on the money, and our green um, um, was not high enough. Now it's, it's hard to boost green all by itself, and we could probably, you know, change the RGB values. Um, so you could go into your gain and you could boost your green. Uh, but again, that's going to dramatically change your white point, which we don't want. Um, so we sort of have to make some hard and fast decisions here. So we made uh, we made all of these a little bit worse. Um, I think uh, from before uh, blue or green, one of those was in the green uh, zone, but now they're not. Um, so that's that's not so good. However, our, our cyan is is far less terrible than it was. So we were sitting at nine point something, uh, I think, from before. Now we're sitting at five point something. So we do have to sort of make a choice now as to what we're happy with. Uh, trying to fine tune this a little bit further can get pretty tricky. Um, you know, if we're going to start fiddling, we're going to blow some of these other values out. Where do we want to be? Uh, what you want, I guess, really is is to have as few spikes as possible. So I think you know, having all if they, all of these were perfect and my cyan was terrible, uh, if my cyan was sort of in the ten range and all of these were in the two range, uh, I think that's probably a bit worse than having these at sort of threes and fours and that at five as a compromise. Uh, and again, this is, um, it, on more modern displays, you've got far more fine grained controls and you can usually get all these way down with a lot of effort. Um, on old CRTs, especially CRTs that have had a lot of um, a lot of life and the, the tubes and boards are probably a bit old, it can be a bit difficult to get some of these down. Um, so, you know, like I might, I might have another go just seeing what if uh, PR makes an effect. Um, I don't think it will. I think it'll probably make everything worse. But let's have a look. Oops, uh, down. All right, so if I fiddle with my Chroma PR, so again, I'm, I'm sitting at uh, 5.2 here. Um, so if I just sort of make a dramatic downscale, what does that do? That's making it much worse. It's probably blowing my reds out, I guess. And if I throw that up, okay. So that's uh, that's doing a pretty good job of getting that down. Let's let's see. Now, I mean, this is always the trick, right? So if we get this way down, what's it going to do to everything else? Two point nine. That's pretty good. Two point six. This is going to cap out at 256. I'm going to push it until I get to 20, and then I'm going to leave it. Assume it gets that far. Okay, I'm just going to leave that at 20. Enter to save that. I do my primaries and secondaries again. And you can see what's happened straight away. Oops. Keep going. So you can see what's happened. Um, I've got my sign bang on the money. Uh, if I get my mouse pointer back. Got my cyan uh, excellent uh, down at 2.0, but now my red is quite terrible. Um, so these are sorts of the the trade-offs that we have to make, and we have to decide what we want to do now, um, which is more important. <coughs> uh, again, you know, that's too high for my liking. I want to get that down. Um, I'm willing to sacrifice a bit of cyan accuracy. Um, you know, these colors are going to be your, your sky tones and your water tones and those sorts of things. Um, so, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to try and get this red uh, back down. So, I'm going to have to sort of undo a little bit of what I just did. Now, again, red uh, samples really slowly. So, any changes we make are going to be uh, pretty laggy. Um, so, if I drop this down a bit. Wait for it to sample a couple of times. 
So let's drop it down from six to five. So you might be forced just to kind of find a happy medium somewhere. Five to four. 4.9 so you can see in our graph like we've just got way too much red so our reds are oversaturated so what that means is anytime we see a red color um, and again knowing how important red is to things like skin tone um, you know f any sort of fire effects explosions those sorts of things you don't want that red to blow out you get that really like oversaturated uh, just too much red in a picture it can look really terrible um, so despite the fact that I'm, I was keen to get that cyan in the ballpark, um, I'm not really willing to sacrifice my red uh, to, to be that far out. A couple more samples, 3.8, yeah. Alright, well it was at 128, if I go right down, what happens? Three, four. Let's take it back at that middle 128 value. And see what happens to red on the PB if there's some relative adjustment that happens here. So we got this all the way down. Oh, hang on. Let it reread for a sec. Oh, that's not too bad. Uh, yeah, a bit too much green, not enough blue. We also might have a, a brightness issue. So um, if you're finding all these values are, uh, across the board are okay and your delta is still quite high, it could be just a, a contrast issue. Uh, contrast does affect um, all the colors at the deeper saturation point. Uh, but let's try sending this up a bit and see what happens. Yeah, it's making it worse. Okay, well that's fine. Uh, having that at zero was good for our cyan, obviously our blues probably too. We'll find out in a sec. Um, and sending this up a bit, it's got our delta down. Let's wait for that to reread. Every time I jump into the menu, the probe's going to read the um, the white and blue off the menu. It's going to throw my measurements out, so I just have to let it settle. Three, four. Push that skywards a bit. Three, one. Three, six, did that go up? I think it did. Yep, it's gone up too far now. All right, let's go back down. So we're just over driving this picture at the uh, at the high end of the saturations it looks like. Uh, I'm going to leave that there for a sec. I'm just going to do a full color sweep again for our primaries and secondaries. And so, oh, hang on, I'll read this black value. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, we're not not great on these full saturated colors. Now, I mean, to be fair, you know, it's very rare that full saturation colors uh, exist when we're watching anything on display, whether it's... Um, whether it's, you know, retro games or whether it's uh, TV content... Um, you tend to your colors tend to sort of fit in this uh, more internal range and tend to be more muted. Um, certainly, you know, no one's got a skin tone that's full saturation red. Um, you know, there are some pretty uh, bold logos out there. The Netflix logo and the Nintendo logo they use pretty high level saturation reds, but even then, they don't use full level saturation um, for a good reason because it's terrible to look at. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, we kind of have to make a compromise there. Uh, red versus cyan, 
Uh, it, unsurprising, right? Because they're on opposite sides of this uh, this color space. Um, so if we affect one, we affect the other. Um, if you can imagine this triangle sort of uh, as, with white as the white point spinning on its axis left and right, uh, those uh, accuracies and inaccuracies are going to affect either end uh, or any sort of um, operation that's going to, um, if they're attached on a string and push that left and right, uh, that's also going to affect those. Um, so yeah, I think uh, I think we're just going to have to settle with that middle point uh, and be happy with that. Um, now what we should do is a, a full um, sweep across grayscale as well, just to make sure that we haven't affected our grayscale too much. Looks pretty good. Now we're going to quickly go through the colors as well. Looks like our green's pretty terrible. Rightio, so let's uh, zoom in on the old graph. Um, color temperature, no, my CIE, that's what I want. So this is a, a zoomed in picture. Um, and we can see, so the the uh, sort of the darker triangle under here is our ideal triangle that we want to try and hit. Uh, and then, so to the squares, so the squares are the sort of the, the perfect measure value where we want to be. Um, and then our circles are us, what, how we're sitting. Um, and then the, the white triangle that sits between the circles is the, uh, the gamut that we have compared to the standard that we want to get to. Um, so in this display, I mean, you know, we, it, again, it is pretty easy to get pedantic about these sorts of things. Um, it, it is pretty good. Uh, I've seen some shocking ones where these points are, uh, you know, they blow out to here or they come all the way in there or that whole uh, triangle is uh, rotated by a number of degrees. So you end up with sort of this point up and this point down uh, and things out of whack. Um, obviously our, uh, our secondary tracking is a little bit off. Um, our magenta is not so great. It swings out. Our sign's not so great. Uh, but our yellow is good. That's, that's not so bad. Um, anyway... I guess the point of this is that, you know, from here we continue trying. Uh, this can take many hours and, and um, drive you to madness sometimes. Sometimes you just have to give in and accept what the display can do for you. Uh, and again, being an older tube, maybe this is what I can get out of it. Um, but I won't uh, bore you all to death. It's something you can all experiment with on, on your own displays. Um, you will have to find the relevant settings. I'm just going to save that setting there. Um, you have to find the relevant settings in your own uh, monitors clearly um, to try and uh, see how these things uh, change. Um, if you're using composite input or S-video input, you'll see things like uh, hue or phase changes, and, uh, and they won't work for me on this particular display because I'm using component in, same with RGB in. But if I was using uh, composite or S video hue and phase changes would definitely change this triangle here would would rotate this um, on its axis uh, with the white as the center point and then you know imagine spinning the circle around so getting those colors more accurate you can if you're using composite input is possible um, depending on how that composite inputs being viewed um, but I'll cover those in later videos I'll do videos later on on sort of domestic televisions using composite in you can see so you know if you had a Nintendo NES with basic output and you want to make sure those colors are accurate that's how you would do that um, uh, we can look more at our graphs too we can look at our gamma graph um, so we see a little bit of drift here um, on the gamma 
uh, but it's not too bad, it's alright. We've got a sort of average gamma of about 2.2, dropping off to about 2.1 down there, so that's that's not too bad. Uh, I quite like that, gamma 2.2 is good for me in this particular environment that I'm in, which is a sort of a darkish games room. If I was calibrating a TV for a, a lighter room, I'd probably aim for 2.4, but that's, that's up to you. Again, I don't like to... Uh, uh, preach rules, just uh, give some uh, technical advice. Uh, luminance graph is pretty good too, right? So all those values are pretty much smack on each other for luminance, which is great. Pretty happy with that. Um, but yeah, next thing we can do is uh, more subjective. So we, we looked at very objective uh, ways to judge our color, uh, which is using our color probe here. Uh, but this actually gives us... Um, let me get out of this menu to my measures. Um, if we look at, uh, oh one thing you can do too, one further test you can do is this full tilt boogie, which I won't do now, but full tilt boogie um, captures, if you see on this little uh, image here, you've got all these squares, right? Every single one of these squares all through this thing and then some just some random plots uh, all around the place. Full Tilt Boogie will capture all of those, every single one of those. And some of these are really nice. So these squares around this range and around this range, particularly these ones over here, um, if you look at those on the darker spectrum towards black, that's where all our human skin tone falls in that range. Um, uh, and that's excellent to look at. But we can also just look at uh, targets, test patterns, levels. One of these should give us a evaluation images. That's what we want. As I, so uh, holding the control key and going from one through to zero on the keypad should give us a bunch of nice test images. So control one uh, gives us these this nice bowl of whatever grapes, I'm assuming, um, for red. And again, so we got a, a nice little... Uh, a gamma ramp or a grayscale ramp across the bottom and then we can see that the color quality that we're looking at there which is kind of nice uh, control 2 gives us our greens some rolling hills and a bit of blue sky um, so again you just a subjective view of those now all these images are uh, captured and calibrated um, so they should look as accurate as possible give you a feel as to whether or not the colors are in the real world level it can be a little bit difficult to do that it should maybe Go outside and look at some real things and come back in so your eyes uh, have adjusted. Uh, control 3 gives us blues. I don't know what a blue macaw should look like. Uh, oops. Some autumn colours. Avatar. Yeah, great. Nice real world objects, hey. Some more. This is a HDR image. I think it's a bit ridiculous. Um, anyway, this this is the best image, I think, uh, because we've got a nice range of skin tones here, and skin tones are particularly troubling to get accurate on a monitor. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm capturing this off my crappy little cell phone off to the side, um, which is probably not going to show you much as the viewer through... Uh, not only the rubbish camera on my phone, but then uh, compressed to H.264 and then uploaded to YouTube where they compress some more and all sorts of awfulness. So um, this is something you're going to have to eyeball yourself. Anyway, that was Control Zero, which is the skin tone test. Um, similarly, you know, don't be afraid to test yourself. Um, there's plenty of uh, plenty of ways you can test. All right, so uh, yeah, there's, there's plenty of ways you can test uh, your skin tone color. What I like to do is it's, I've chosen a, just a random, random YouTube video here. I don't know who this clown is. Um, and, uh, but they obviously have got themselves a fairly decent camera. Um, so in some nice natural light, um, coming streaming through their, I guess their bedroom window, um, living in the basement of wherever they're living. And so, yeah, we see some, some good skin tones there, some good natural colors. Um, lights and darks being sort of evenly uh, distributed, uh, things are looking good. So you can do the same. Um, there's plenty of great uh, test footage on on YouTube where people have uh, done, particularly if you grab the 4K stuff. A lot of the 4K stuff they bother to get the color right. Um, any nature documentary stuff they get the color right. Um, so that's that's also not a terrible test. Um, again, you you do have to be careful if they've done some sort of color grading over the top. It's going to uh, change your view. But that's that's not too bad if you want to look at something else. On your monitor, that's not uh, that's not just the test footage that comes uh, with this program. 
Alrighty, so um, as far as looking at the PVM goes, uh, I'm probably going to leave that series there. So we, uh, what I didn't do was cover um, initial black levels, which I might do in another video. That's not done using a probe. We use a, a pluge, uh, picture lineup generating equipment, P-L-U-G-E uh, generator. So you can use anything that, that displays a, a pluge pattern. I'll, I'll probably go through the uh, AVS HD videos at some later point uh, and talk about how to use those. I'll probably do that on the on the consumer TV as an example um, off the off the DVD. Um, but you can do that here too. Um, actually I might do a video about that later. But anyway, uh, that's this done I guess for the PVM series. Uh, we looked at our grayscales, we looked at our colours, our uh, primaries and our secondaries. Uh, we found some nice hidden menus in the PVM that we can use to fiddle with the colours. Uh, we got our triangle pretty good. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy enough with that. I'm not super, super pedantic. Um, if you're the kind of person who likes to try and get all the circles and all the boxes, uh, by all means, please uh, do that with your displays. Let me know how you go. Um, otherwise, uh, I'll probably move on from here onto some different types of displays for people who don't own PVMs, and we'll take a look at those in the future. Uh, all right, thanks guys. I'll see you next time. As always, if you want to flame me, hit me on Twitter. I'll put my uh, link, handle, ID, something, something, somewhere. Um, chat to me there. Thanks. Bye.